Right, hello and welcome to another one of my uh, making of series, uh, another video on one of my liner cut prints that I've recently done called The Sad Clown. Uh, this one is part of the Circus series of prints. Um, I've got a large series of prints called The Circus, or Away with the Circus, um, actually. And uh, it, they, uh, it, the series contains uh, 10 lino cut prints, and then um, five or more at this stage. Um, monotype prints, which are original prints that can only be done once. But lino cut prints can be done multiple times, and I normally have an addition of 50, sometimes 30, and sometimes in case of colourful ones, um, additions are 5. Um, yeah, so this is the sad clown one. Um, I'm gonna narrate a little bit of it in parts, um, just to talk about what I'm doing, if I'm doing something interesting, and then some other parts will just be sped up with some music over the top. Uh, so yeah, so I start doing my prints by drawing, as you can see here, I do a sketch. I uh, sketch the subject out, I use marker on the lino um, block and I just sketch everything out. So the way I sketch things, um, I don't go exactly to what I'll be carving on later on, I just do a rough sketch and then I kind of look at it and I decide how I want to carve it when it comes to carving. Um, so I've explained this before in other videos but I think I need to explain it every time because every video is a new video. Um, so with lino printing and lino cutting, um, you have a lino um, block. It's um, linoleum, it's the material that people use for flooring mostly, that's what it's known for. It's got a very gummy texture and it's very soft and malleable. And with the right tools, there's tools made for it, so they're kind of like these bent knives, um, you can carve into it um, and you can kind of like scoop out <laughs> bits of it. <laughs> How better to explain it, but I think you can uh, see quite well now from the video. And uh, yeah, that's how line of cutting works. But it kind of works opposite to a drawing. So when you draw, you use a darker color on a white piece of paper and that's how you make the marks but this is kind of backwards because when you print it you have a layer of dark ink on top of the block so what you scoop out will in the end be white um, so it just kind of works a bit backwards so for example if you um, really want the lines to show and you want the lines to be the focus and you want the lines to be black then you have to scoop out all the rest of it and leave out the lines but if you want the lines to be white then you just kind of scoop it out as you would just a normal drawing so normally I do a rough sketch and I look at the block and I decide um, how I want it to look so I decide what I want to be white and I decide what I want to keep dark. When I do people and what I've done with this series um, and what I normally do is I keep skin, I keep that as white and I keep um, dark lines there so you'll see later on when I do the face that I'm keeping the lines of the eyes and the lines any other lines in the face, so the mouth, and I, I'm keeping that and I'm scooping all around it. But when I'm doing flowers, like I'm doing here, um, I want them to be white, so I'm just going and following the drawing and um, doing those lines, and then those will be white. 
Uh, and yeah, like I said, I don't do my sketch to prepare myself for the drawing. I just look at it and I decide again what I want to keep as white and where I want the dark ones to be. And the reason I normally keep the faces and skin as white is because it also helps. I think it, it helps with clarity of the faces because Lino is such a fickle <laughs> medium. It's very, it's difficult to get a clear picture. So you have to be very good friends with it to, uh, and not work against it. So you're not going to get something, you could get something very realistic if you plan it really well. And if you can like construct a face really well with those mark makings, and then yes, you can make something very realistic. But otherwise, when you make smaller blocks like I do of smaller illustrations, then I don't expect them to be extremely realistic, I don't expect them to be, I don't expect lines to be straight, I don't expect, I kind of work with the medium and I really embrace any mistakes that happen, like if the medium forces me to do an eye a certain way and I car and like carve into a like quite as detailed as I normally would when I draw. Um, I very much like that. That's why I like this medium, and I think in the end it just gives a a little bit of like a notion of the faces, but they're not exactly as you know your reference photo or whatever you're working from. So that's I really really like that about the medium and. I've learned to work with it, so I started talking about this because of I was talking about how I do faces, so um, yeah, I think when I do it the other way around and I just keep to the lines, then it helps, um, it helps the face be clearer, so it helps me not want to do it perfect, because if I were to just follow the lines, I would probably just want to make them as close to normal as possible and then that's not possible so then I don't know if this makes much sense but but yeah but when I do it the other way around and I carve around them and I just leave whatever lines can be left when I do that because the space is so tiny um I like how the face turns out better that way um yeah I think I'll stop here uh and you can see me keep 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 carving you can see how I keep carving uh, there's quite a few interesting lines in this one um, because there's the straight lines from the curtains there's the lines on the on the legs uh, but then there's some polka dots as well so that's interesting there's some like little wavy things like this one here um, and I do the wavy lines I kind of just you can see like I move my hand with the thing which if, again, if you want your print to turn out absolutely perfect, that's probably not the best method, but I don't necessarily want that. I want the wavy thing to have quite a natural feel to it, so that's why I move my hand like that. Um, yeah, so it's a little bit detailed, this print, uh, and it has a lot of different mark makings, so it should be an interesting one to watch. And um, probably catch you a bit later when it comes to print making. And I'll talk a bit about that then. Enjoy!
So, um, now we come to printmaking. Uh, the print is finished, as if by magic. I wish it was that quick in real life. I hope you enjoyed watching that. It's quite a therapeutic thing to do when you get the hang of it. And um, yeah, sometimes, I think because I don't do the sketches very clearly and I have to decide some things on the spot, it's not as therapeutic as it could be. But maybe in the future I can plan them from the beginning and do the sketch from the beginning. And then maybe I wouldn't have to decide on the spot. But yeah, uh, so now it comes to printmaking. Um, maybe you're able to see by the table that um, the paper, when you start out, is wet. Uh, so I wet the paper and I dry it off with a rag. And I then ink the plate, as you can clearly see here. It has to be a very nice even layer of ink uh, and definitely it has to not be gloopy at all it has to be like a very very smooth and even layer uh, for the print to turn out well and I then place it on top of the paper and I start pressing on it um, now I will get a printing press soon and you can do line of prints with uh, a printing press Sometimes people still prefer to do smaller ones by hand um, because you can press on top of them not just with my hands like I do here but using other tools um, which I sometimes do use and I think very soon after the, this uh, clip you'll see the reveal of the first one so this one was actually the first ever print, so this was the test print. So I normally do a test print when I finish cutting up the board, uh, just to see what else I have to work on, if there's anything else that I need to change before I print the whole thing. Uh, so this is why I do this. In this case, there was nothing I needed to change, Anything, everything turned out the way I wanted it to, uh, which is really exciting. So this was just ready to to print on one of my printmaking days. And there we go, that's so satisfying to watch. I love watching <laughs> reveals. It's satisfying in real life too, uh, when you do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is how I make my prints. Most of the time, and you'll see this uh, just now later on, because there's more more of the video to watch of um, of me printing and you will see that some of them I do have to stop and work on them um, by hand and I do this because when I do my prints um, I encourage these little marks to happen and um, like here, this is a perfect example. This is exactly what I'm talking about. And like you can see, there are certain marks in certain areas. And so I paint over them to basically keep them where I want them. So I think in this case, I'm basically making everything pretty dark and keeping those areas with those marks around where the curtains are in the print. Uh, but it depends. Every print is different, um, that's, that's why every print is unique, um, is because, yeah, I, I normally encourage these, these marks to happen and then I kind of control where they are uh, later on. Uh, and sometimes I do just print completely black ones. Um, it happens more so by mistake that they're completely black because most of the time um, I like these marks to happen. Um, well, I say that, but not always, because, for example, I have a print... When prints are incredibly detailed, um, then it's not really good to... You have to print it black, because there's. it just means that the print won't be very clear. But when 
the design isn't as detailed and there's a lot of 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 black room of, of dark room on the print where there's a lot of darker areas that are just all together then um, it's nice to have I think <laughs> it's nice to have a little design just to make each of them different and it gives them a bit of life I think um, yeah I hope you enjoyed this video um, we've come to the end I've talked to myself <laughs> until until the end um, and yeah so I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you like this print and I hope you liked this little um, insight into my process and um, please go to my website to see more of them if you if you really liked it um, you can see all of them there there's nice detailed photos of everything yeah thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one <laughs>